Hey everyone, it's Mary from SVG Cuts. I'm here today with five brand new box cards for Halloween. I had a lot of fun coming up with the designs and I hope you have a great time making them. The first one that I designed was this little house box card and I wanted it to look like one of those um, vintage paper houses. I believe they're called putts houses and I'm not an expert on them or very familiar with them, but I've seen photos of, you know, of them online or ones you know ones that are inspired by them maybe you have to a lot of times people put them underneath um, a glass like bell jar or a cloche and they usually they have glitter on them and um, little bottle brush trees so that's the look that I was going for with this box card and I, I think it came out super cute like all box cards um, that we have at SVG Cuts and other ones probably out there as well. Um, the idea is that they all fold flat to go inside an envelope and then when they come out they look really dimensional and super cool. So that makes them really fun to make and really fun to give and really fun to receive and really fun to display. So um, I think you're going to have a great time making this one and there's no reason you couldn't turn this into a different season or holiday or someone on Facebook had said it would be a cute um, congratulations on your new home card. It would definitely be cute for Christmas, winter, Easter, Valentine's Day, really you name it, you give it any kind of theme you want and um, it's adorable. So I hope you have a really fun time making that one. The next one that I came up with was, I believe it was this one, um, the owl with the jack-o'-lantern. So this is inspired by a similar vintage looking design, but I, I changed it up a little bit and um, made the owl look a little more expression, gave him some more expression on his face and uh, just kind of tweaked everything up a little bit to make it, you know, kind of make it my own and make it the way that I was like visualizing it to be. And the different layers on the jack-o'-lantern's face kind of really make it look like it was carved a little bit like it's kind of got some dimension in there and the way that the back is is kind of cool how you see your stamped thing here so this one goes together real quick and easy hope you have a fun time making it if you are an owl lover and or a vintage lover then you're going to be pumped about that one so next i came up with this card and this one i'm not so sure that you could adapt it beyond halloween maybe it could be kind of fall fallish because, um, I don't know, just something about it, I wanted it to look creepy. Maybe it's mostly these, um, these black uh, viney elements in the back here <clears throat> are just kind of making it look a little creepy. Um, I think it looks like something you'd find in like a witch's living room or a haunted house's parlor or something. To me, maybe with some different colors it could be adapted to something else. I'd be interested to see if you have that vision and you want to do that. That would be cool to see too. But um, I... I was really going for like an elegant, spooky look with this one. So we also have our cute little book that's a box card. They're all box cards. They all fold flat, go inside envelopes. And this one is, it's kind of meant to look like an old album or an old book. And I've got the details on the spine and this, this lettering here. I spent probably half a day really um, fine tuning it, tweaking it, making sure it cuts well because it's really um, kind of intricate but not too hard to glue and it's not um, too intricate for a cutting machine. So you just glue the black on top of the yellow and stick it in there nice and spooky. You can do whatever you'd like with your pages. I also included in the extras folder there's um, a back side if you want to put something on the back side. There's a file for that in there too. So we did this. Um, and by we, I mean me. <laughs> um, I'm silly. And then I used this same stamp on the back for all of the cards because it's the only one that I could find in person at any craft store that said Happy Halloween or anything Halloween. Um, I went around to, I even went into Walmart. I, I don't know if they even really sell craft supplies, but I was like, I'm going to take a gamble and try everything. Um, couldn't find anything except for, a, um, where is it? Oh, I found this really cool one at Michael's and it is, um, it's got like every holiday kind of on it. So that is probably going to be super useful if you don't have a lot of um, sentiments. I find them super handy for card making because usually, um, usually I just want to stamp something on the back that says something about the holiday or the theme. So for me, that's a really useful one. Finally, we have this guy. I used an Action Wobble by Hampton Arts, Arts or Art, Hampton Arts. 
um, on the on the back side. It's basically a plastic spring with adhesive on both ends of it to make it really fun. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I got them on Amazon and I heard about them years ago from my friend Cheryl Becker, who used to be on our design team at SVG Cuts. And um, I had never used them until now, finally. I was like, today is the day I'm using an action wobble on my jack o lantern or my jack in the box <laughs> cat card. So a lot of fun with that. Hopefully you have a blast with it too. You'll have to share pictures with us if you make something, one of these cards or anything else on Facebook, um, put it on your blog, pin it on Pinterest, Instagram. Um, I always love to see. So let's go ahead and make our cards. First for the Ghost Stories box card, if you take a look in your PDF that comes in your download, for each card it shows the way that some of the parts are laid out. So on this one piece I've got this glued on here as well as a panel here, a panel here, the fence part, the ghost, and then the inside of the back of the card has the moon glued on it with a branch and the back of the card. So I referred to this while I was putting mine together. So as you can see this piece here, just like in the PDF, I went ahead and glued the orange on top of the black and then I glued that to the page and then I glued this panel onto it also. And then for this piece, it looks like this. I went ahead and glued this panel on as well as the fence and then the ghost. And then I glued my black top layer of letters onto this bottom layer. And I went ahead and glued this bat onto its yellow layer. Next I went ahead and glued some pieces onto these large black shapes. So your machine will have cut a number into the side of these big shapes. I darkened it in or whitened it with a white gel pen so that you could see it in this video. So I went ahead and folded it where it's scored. I glued my moon on with the branch here. So this is piece number one. Then we've got piece number two here, which looks like this. I went ahead and folded it and glued this back. This is gonna be the back of my card and this stuff on the spine of the book. And then piece number three, this is the front of my card. I went ahead and glued that on and folded it and then this is piece number four although it doesn't say four on it because there's nowhere hidden to put a number but that's piece number four then I've got this oval that I stamped on and then the pieces for the envelope which we will get to at the very end once we make our card first I'm going to take these two pieces one and two and I'm going to do this. I'm lining up these folds here um, so that it's laying on top of the other piece. So I'm going to use this oval to go ahead and see where I want to glue my oval on the inside. So I'll get my trusty glue out and Glue that in the opening there. Just like so. And this stamp that I used, by the way, is from this stamp set from Hero Arts. I actually got it at Michael's recently. I Either I can't find my Halloween stamps or I don't have any, but that sounds that, that seems and sounds impossible <laughs> that I wouldn't have any Halloween stamps. I don't know if I, I put them away too well or something, but I couldn't find any of them. So I scoured the stores for a simple Happy Halloween stamp, and I couldn't believe I found this. That was about all I could find in person at the store. It was like a craft emergency. Went to Hobby Lobby. They don't really have a lot of clear sentiment stamps in person at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. I I use them quite a bit, but maybe they're just not that popular with people in general. I don't know. 
so as you can see I put some glue on the tab there and I glued this just like that then I'll do the same thing put some glue on this tab and glue piece number three onto it which is this one here with the three on it just like that and then I will glue this one onto this tab here so nice and straightforward we're just gluing them in order one two three and then this one using that tab Next, I'm going to put some glue on this tab here. And glue that right inside. Just like this. So if you look down from the top, you can see that it forms a little um, shape like that. So that's the front cover of our Scary Stories book. Speaking of scary stories, you'll have to let me know in the comments if you are familiar with the <clears throat> Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark books. They were really popular when I was a kid in the mid to late 80s, and I think they're, I mean, I still see them around, I think. I actually got to meet the author one time, Alvin Schwartz, at uh, my local Borders bookstore. I remember Borders, oh, wow, I'm getting glue all over the place right now. I'm totally out of control with this, with this, but... Luckily, I'm going to be covering that, that spot up there. So I was probably in third grade or something and got to go meet him and hear him read one of his stories to everyone. It was really cool. So a random side note. These are the books that I'm talking about. I was kind of obsessed with these when I was a kid. And they are, they are creepy. They scared me. Whew. And there's my uh, signed copy from Alvin Schwartz himself super cool so yeah got them on my shelf next to some other inspirational Halloween books that are fun so next I've got these two pieces put together and I will go ahead and join them up with these uh, tabs here so I will put some glue here And just glue these together like this. And in your extras folder, if you want to cut them out, there are some panels that you can put on the back, back side as well if you want to do that. There's some more details about that in your PDF that comes with your download about what they're called and what size to make them if you're interested in that. Then I'm just going to glue this right in the center here. Making sure that it's parallel to its uh, neighbors so the fold lines are parallel with each other so that your card folds flat. So this is pretty cute. You could even put some photos in here if you wanted. That would be pretty awesome. So next we can glue this on the inside. I better slow down. Slow down with my glue there. It's 
kind of tricky on the black paper. It really shows up if it gets out, out in the open there. So we can glue this in the middle. Oops, like this. Ooh, glue fail. Uh, that'll work. So tell me if you have ever met any of your favorite authors before either, speaking of books. I don't think I've really met any, any more. My mom has actually met Susan Branch at a local bookstore, which was really cool. She has some really awesome um, artwork and like feel-good feel -good books with recipes and stuff. And uh, actually, I got to meet Julie. Well, I didn't, I didn't get to meet her. I got to see her give a presentation on stage about a book that she wrote with her daughter. It's like a kid's book. It came out around Mother's Day, and we saw her talk about it. And then we watched uh, The Sound of Music in the theater. It was really cool. That little foam square that I put on, I use those sometimes for dimension, they come in black and white, different sizes. I got them on Amazon, it's a 3D thin foam square by Scrapbook Adhesives. There's a couple different um, brands out there of dimensional adhesive. So anyway, card all put together, pretty easy peasy, and if you wanted to, if you're not familiar with a white gel pen, you could even add something if you wanted to do some kind of doodles or something, or write a write a message or maybe put put like some little stars so you can draw on black or dark paper with a gel pen and still be able to see it which is pretty cool so you can have fun get a little crazy let that dry a little bit and then now for the envelope I've got the pieces here these are the two sides and you can tell this is the top because of the way it's curved up there. We're going to glue these onto the sides like that. And then this is the top. We're going to glue that on like this. And the bottom we'll glue on like that. So I will glue the bottom being careful to line up the corners and everything. So this envelope I had to split into pieces because I was not able to fit an entire, fit the whole thing on a piece of 12 by 12 because the card is pretty large. So that's why it is in pieces. But that's kind of cool. It gives you a chance to spruce it up if you want to and cut the parts out of different colors and patterns. You could just cut them all out of the same color if you wanted to, but but that's up to you. And then this piece has a decorative tab since it's visible when you open your card or when you open the envelope and take out the card. You're going to be looking at this, so I, I thought it would be a good idea to make it look cute. So next we can fold the sides in and Put some glue on the bottom of the side tabs, <clears throat> the side flaps, and fold the bottom up into place. Then you can carefully flatten your card and make sure nothing's getting stuck or bent. And then just carefully carefully uh, feed that down in there and it kind of gets stuck 
on the bottom tab down there. Kind of makes it get stuck a little bit, but just carefully make it fit and you're all set. Next for the Jack in the Box card, I've got my pieces and my PDF that comes in your download, which shows the way that I've laid mine out. You can definitely change it up if you want to, but here's the front of the card where I put the these like panels and just where I put all this all this good stuff. So you can look at that if you want to to see what's going on. I've got my envelope here. We'll save that for the end. And then I went ahead and started gluing some stuff together. So let's start at the beginning. So I've got the front of my card here, which is this piece, like this, and it has this little handle that comes out from the side. I went ahead and glued this on the front, and then I'm going to feed this like that and glue that on. And then this piece here, I went ahead and glued <clears throat> some stars on. And by glue, I actually mean I used a lot of these um, thin 3D foam squares by Scrapbook Adhesive. I um, used a lot of these small ones to add dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that onto there. Also, just like this. You know, the cool thing about Halloween projects sometimes is if you glue something on crooked, you can just pretend like you meant to do it because it's, uh, it's allowed. It makes it more festive sometimes. And I went ahead and glued these together with some adhesive squares. And I'll go ahead and put that there. So you could put your stars wherever you want. I just, um, if you want to do it the way that I've done it, you can t take a look at the PDF or what have you. So then this is the other other piece here. I glued this frame on, this large open star on, and then I doubled up these guys, stamped on that label and glued it on, and then put this side panel here. So these are going to get glued together just like that in a moment. I also have piece number three here. So your machine will have cut a number here, right there. I'm just doing this so that you can see it in this video. You don't need to do that also, but you could. So this is my white gel pen that I like to use sometimes. You can draw on dark paper with it and still be able to see it. I went ahead and put my stars on piece number one here like this, just like it shows in the PDF. I put that here and I put this yellow piece on the back. And I also put his little face together. It all goes on this yellow piece. I put his collar on and then I put his black top layer on and then I put his hat on with the little bottom part there. And I just smeared my white gel pen, but what are you going to do? So, you could put a pom-pom on if you want. That's what I did on my original guy. He's got a pom-pom. But I don't know if I feel like getting out my hot glue gun right now, so I'm just going to put something else on mine. Even though it's... Well, you know, the pom-pom is cute. I might just add that later, I think is what I'll do. So now, we can glue these two sides together, these two pieces together, and we'll just affix the, uh, the head onto the body there. You could either glue it or add a dimensional adhesive square, or if you want yours to wobble like mine, 
I used some Action Wobbles, which are by Hampton Arts. Hampton Art. They look like this. I got them on Amazon. And I heard about them from my crafty friend Cheryl Becker from Ohio, who used to be on the SPG Cuts design team back when I had one. And Cheryl's the bomb. I love her style. And she uh, introduced me to the Action Wobbles, and this is finally, I'm finally using some after I got some on Amazon. I guess these are the mini ones. That's all I really have. So that is how I will put his head on. You could do it whatever way you want. This is kind of how I did it last time. So this is like a little plastic spring that has like a peel off peel off uh, parts so you can affix something to both sides. I don't think it really matters which ooh, which way you do it. I'm gonna go this way and like this. And then that's so cute. Next I'm gonna put these in place. I'm gonna start with number three. And if you're more of an advanced paper crafter and or if you've made my box cards in the past, this is how I put them together. And I've heard a few people say that they like to leave the box part open and sort of put the tabs in while the whole thing's open. Personally, I think mine doesn't come, up, come out lined up as nicely, like it doesn't really want to fold as flat for me when I try to do it differently. So there's more than one way to, to do a lot of stuff like this. If you feel like you want to put it together in a different order or something, by all means go for it. Because this, this does make it a little bit trickier to not get glue everywhere, but I think the end result is more precise when it's when you put it together this way. So I did just get glue all over, all over in there. So I'm making sure that the back of the tab is flush with whatever's behind it, basically. And so that everything is nice and parallel and perpendicular in there. So the back of that tab is just flush with what's behind it there. And before it's completely dry, I want to make sure that it's going to fold flat both ways. And it does. So that's adorable. If you wanted to add a pom-pom on his body, well, you can't really see it, so you could, but it's up to you. It's your card. So next I've got my envelope here and the rounded part is the bottom. These are the two sides. So I will put some glue here and here. And then fold it up. Then you can carefully fold your card flat. Being sure that nothing is getting stuck on anything else and carefully slide it into its envelope.
Next for the Owl and Jack Lantern card, here is how some of it's laid out. The front here has some stars. This insert's got the owl on it with a star. The inside of the back is just plain. And then the back of the card has this panel and these flaps have those panels. So I did go ahead and do that for this guy, like this. Here's this insert. We can layer up our owl on that. And put the front of our card aside over here. We've got the owl's eyes, feet, and bill, and then the envelope also. So let's glue our owl together. And on my original one, I did rub a little bit of brown ink around these shapes as well as some orange around the nose. I have some ink pads that um, are this shape, they're by color box. Sometimes they come in a stack or by themselves and I use them to rub on the edges of some shapes sometimes. And then this shimmer paper is from Michaels. I just thought it looked kind of nice but you don't have to use shimmer paper. And then I also rubbed an orange ink pad around these shapes before I layered them together. So we can flip up some of his little front details. Like this. And then if you wanted to give his wings a little bit of a curve, you could do that too. You could use probably a lot of different little tools, but I I'm going to use my bone folder, it's pretty handy, and then we'll just glue that right on. Just like this. So I've got a dark brown ink pad here. I'll just kind of lightly dab it on the edges there. It definitely adds a nice touch and I pretty much do it to everything that I make because I like it. So you can add a few dots of glue to this piece and glue that on. Then I'm going to use one of my 3D thin foam squares from Scrapbook Adhesives that I got on Amazon to affix this into place. Let me take a look at my original one. It's like he's got some eyelids, kind of. So we can make the bottom of his eyes kind of lines up with the bottom and leaves some some brown at the top a little bit. So I know these pieces are pretty tiny. It's not very fun to glue them on, but it does give his face some nice expression. And we want those black parts to be kind of up touching the eyelids there. So as long as he's uh As long as he's somewhat close to that, then he's going to look like mine, too. As long as they're kind of angled in somewhat of a, the same direction, too, that's nice. And I used an orange ink pad on this bill before, but I don't... I don't feel like getting it out, so I'm going to just do this. Still cute. A little dot of glue. And put that there. 
throw some ink on the bottom of his feet, like a shadow. And glue those down here. Next, we can layer up our jack-o'-lantern, and I will also put a dot of glue here and put this little star here. You could put your stars wherever you want. They don't have to be in the same spot as mine. Now I do want to add dimension to these pieces because it looks really nice. And when I do that, I just go a little heavier on the bottom because it's a you know, it's supposed to be like a round shape. A pumpkin. So it makes it look cooler when it you kind of fake fake the uh, shadow a little bit by inking it. I'll go a little heavier on the bottom. So again, I did orange for this part before, which I like the look of a lot. So let's see how the this dark brown looks. You could just glue them all together if you want, but I am going to use my dimensional squares because you can't have too much dimension. I don't think I don't think anyone's ever regretted adding dimension to a craft project. I don't know why you would. Um, basically, I'm going to line up the top here, centered, and then just let it fall into place. So you can see how it looks like that. Same with this guy. So I'll just center the center the top is a guideline and then boom. Oh hello Mr. Dimensional Pumpkin, you look lovely. <laughs> and the bottom just centered also. Then we can glue him together just like this. So what I'm going to do here is put some glue on this tab and glue that. You want to make sure that it's uh, you know level and that it's lining up with your pumpkin and then do the same thing on the other side. I also stamped on the back side of this piece. I think I forgot to mention that. Because it's going to show through the hole in the back. Oh, 
Oh boy. I'm not being very careful. And I am getting glue all over the place. So you want to make sure that those tabs are flush with the back of the box. The back of the tabs are flush with the back of the box. Do your best to not get glue on your project if you can. It's a little tricky sometimes, but you got this. You can be more careful than me and yours will be fantastic. And then I will put a dot of glue on the star and glue that on. as well as this little guy right here. Adorable. Love it. So now you can put your envelope together. This largest flap is the top. So you can fold the two sides in and add some glue and fold the bottom up. Then once it's dry, you can carefully Hold your card flat, and that's going to fit inside just like this. Next, we've got the vintage house box card, and in your PDF, it also shows where some of the shapes are going. So, this is the front and the sides. There's some panels underneath these windows, and some little rectangles that are going on the fence. Then we got some more windows, trim. This is a folded piece up here. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. And then the little guy, as well as a panel and a label for stamping on. So this says inside of back. That's wrong. It should just say back. This is just the back. It's always something, you know. Sorry, guys. So I went ahead and started put some of these together. I folded these over, which can be a little tricky because it's such a thin part, but if you can just kind of use your thumbnail to kind of get in there and just, it doesn't have to be like a perfect fold as long as that shutter is kind of coming forward, it's going to look a little cuter that way. So we've got those four Two of them are going here, and I put this trim on the top there. I also popped out the popped out the front doors. And the back, I went ahead and put that panel on the back with the label and the stamp. I rubbed a black ink pattern on the outside too. Makes it look kind of spookier and moonier. Then this is the roof part that's folded over, which is gonna go on this piece. I already glued this little rectangle up here. And I'll just be gluing that right on, right on there. And then I also embossed these two panels with some cobweb looking texture. And then there's also this piece, which looks like this. I folded it in the four spots and I glued this on the inside. I went ahead and put one of the little trees together, which is going to go on that piece I just had. So I've got the three other pieces for the other tree as well as this thing and our two rectangles and the envelope. So let's start by gluing these panels onto the sides here. And once they're glued down, I'm going to get out my light brown ink pad and kind of smudge them up a little bit. It's weird. You would think that a white ink pad would be the choice, and you could totally do that too, but 
feel like it's a little too dramatic when you when you uh, use a white one in this kind of situation. So this light brown, it's called Dune, or any other kind of light brown is going to be cool. So if you rub that on a black Halloween project, I love that look. I don't know if you can see it that well, but it really brings out the embossing texture and it also makes it look more spooky and decrepit. <laughs> that might be the first time I've ever said that word. I think it's fitting. It looks like a spooky, spooky house. I'd be afraid to go trick or treat there. So next we can glue this tab. Up at the top here. Like this. Wow, it's it's really 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 windy today in Chicagoland. It's very windy and it just started pouring rain too. My husband's currently on a golf course right now because he's nuts. Not not this girl. You're not gonna catch me on a golf course right now. It's chilly and it's windy and now it's rainy. Mm, no thanks. I think I'll stay inside and do cribs. <laughs> so as you can see, I just put a little bit of glue <clears throat> around there and there's some wiggle room for error. If it's not perfectly centered, it's not the end of the world. So you can you can do little dots if you want. Oh, it's stormy. So stormy right now. I'm gonna have to make sure all my my windows are all closed, but it's so weird if they're not locked. Somehow water still comes in if, if they're not locked. Even the up, upstairs ones, you know, you don't always lock the upstairs ones, but I guess I have to. Um, There's snow blowing sideways right now. What is going on? You gotta be kidding me. Wow. The wind is blowing hard. Like, I hope the all the pretty leaves don't blow off all the... Man, it's snowing pretty hard. That's crazy. Completely crazy. In the middle of October. This is completely nuts. So I guess we're in the middle of a blizzard now. It's completely crazy. I just I can't believe my eyes. It's so early for a hardcore snowstorm. Sometimes you see uh, you know some flurries or something, but it is like a vortex of North Pole bearing down. Anyway, next I'm gonna glue these two windows here and here. With some glue. So I get a lot of people asking me um, about this glue. It's just my glue that I've been using for a long time. They changed the packaging a couple times. I like it because it's uh, easy to find at stores. It's quick drying without being like too immediate. So if you want to move something around, you, you have like a couple seconds to do that. I like the uh, precision nozzle there. Sometimes it gets clogged up if it sits open for a little too long. But I just uh, jam a pin down in there to bust it up and get it going again. And it's cool. It dries clear, but it dries clear, but if it's on paper, it's like shiny. So 
kind of don't really want it showing, but that's that. It's called Scotch Tacky Glue. I have a, a little blog post about it, but there's not too much really to say other than that it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So I am gluing this right here so it, it sticks out a little bit from the edge. So there's lots of other glues out there that other people love. And I really have not explored my other options of glue because I'm happy with this one and I don't know, but some of you guys like some other different glue. So that's cool. But this one's nice and easy to find at the craft store, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joanne Fabrics here in the US, as well as on Amazon. Probably other places too. So this is gonna go in here like this. I mean, like that rather. We can go ahead and put that on. Just like that. So on my original card, I added glitter to this, this trim piece and to this one. So just, as you can see, it kind of started to fall off a little bit. I had it coated, but I guess it's been a while since I used real glitter on something instead of glitter paper. And apparently I did not use enough uh, glue, but that's cool. I'm cool with it. It's supposed to, this project is supposed to kind of like look like one of those vintage putz houses, P-U-T-Z I think like a um, little paper houses that were popular decades ago. I don't, I don't know that much about it, but they're adorable. And they kind of, kind of look like this, I think, to me anyway. So that's what this little guy was supposed to look like. And I don't see why you couldn't make it in white as like a snowy Christmas house if you wanted to. That would be adorable. So as you can see, I just folded that around, or put glue on that and then glued it into place right there. Man, I'm getting glue everywhere, but since it's a Halloween project, we'll just say it's on purpose. It's like some distressing or cobweb or something, or slime. So here's where my little tree is going to get glued on. Oh, hi, Winnie. And basically, oh, hello. There you are. Basically, for these three tree parts, I'm rubbing a light brown ink pad on the bottom just to bring out the details there. And then I'm just bending the bottom part forward and then layering them up, gluing them together. Pretty easy peasy. Oh, who's my kitty cat? Here to help. Thanks. Even she can't believe this snow, it is still blowing huge pieces of snow literally sideways still I'm like flabbergasted right now yeah you too I know it's crazy so crazy Winnie. Okay, thanks. so next I will glue the other little tree on Supposed to be stable. Winnie. This is a new level of help. 
Thank you. Oh, thank you. Go look out the window. Look at that snow. I know. Dude, what the heck? That is insane. Can you believe this? Let's see you. Looking at the snow? I know. That's crazy. It's still fall and there's snow blowing so hard. So my little heater is so cute. I love this thing. I got it last year from QVC. It's, it's just great. It really heats up in here. Because this room is like the coldest room. The coldest room of the house basically and then I can turn it on warm up a little bit and not have to blast the heat throughout the entire house just for this room so that's cool Next, I'm going to glue this onto the front here. It's like hard to focus with this insane arctic blast we're getting. It's like when you're a kid in school and there's a big thunderstorm. Nobody can pay any attention because you're like, whoa. <laughs> That's me right now. You guys will have to let me know in the comments if you live if you live in the Midwest and you're watching this anytime soon, did you get blasted with snow too? If you live near Chicago, you know, Chicago land as they say, even though it takes like an hour to get down there um, from here, then you are probably getting snowed on also. It's a little early for that. Now basically these are going to go inside this, this tab is going to fit inside so that it's lined up there with half the window, if that makes sense. So if you look carefully, you'll be able to see that it's lined up. So let's... Just go ahead and put that on the inside. And if you want to do it so that you can see, just barely see the edge of it on one side of the window, then you know that you're good to go. Make sure it'll fold flat. So that's maybe a hair trickier than usual, but worth it for the effect that you get. And then before it's completely dry, you wanna make sure that it's gonna be folding flat for you. So I'm gonna glue this guy on the inside here. Next, I'll do the same thing on the other side here. With this tab. So then when you're ready to fold it flat, you just wanna flatten this roof part out and also the little porch part here. So I flatten this porch, porch part out and just carefully flatten it for your envelope, which is right here, and the top is the pointy, the large pointy flap, so these are the sides and the bottom here. So you'll just put some glue here and here, close it up, and then carefully put your card inside. Finally, we've got the spooky floral box card, and as usual, we have the insert 
layout here so you can see where some of the parts go, how I have the flowers laid out on mine. If you want to change it up to something a little different, you could, but it's up to you. So again, that comes in your download. You can just open it up. You can look at it on your computer, or if you got the skills, you can put it on your tablet. That can be a little tricky, but that's a great place to put all your, your PDFs. Um, or you can print it out and put it in a binder. So I have this piece is going to go on the front, and here's my finished one. You can see. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, no, no, no. This is not a good time. I'm sorry. So, this flower on the front here with this stem, that's this. these pieces here. Then, piece number one or insert number one rather, there's a, a one cut out here and then this you can use to glue this on. I rubbed a little bit of ink on the edges of these petals. You can do that if you want or not. Looks a little more spooky with some heavy inking on it because normally I wouldn't go so heavy with a dark brown like that probably. But you just, you never know. You never know what you're going to do when you're crafting. Do whatever you want. So, I'm going to just haphazardly fold those like that. I'm going to offset it, put that there, and then this is here with this, this, and this. Then there's another one of those flowers here for piece number three. And your machine will have cut these numbers three, two, and one into the side of your pieces just to help you identify them. I know. Then on the inside of the back, we have another smaller flower, as well as this piece, and another flower like this one, but with a stem. So I went ahead and glued this panel on the inside of my card, and I folded these over, glued this here, as well as these flat panels on. Then this piece can go here, except I accidentally stamped on the wrong side. So I think I'm going to... So you, you'll you glue yours here like this <clears throat> if you want to stamp on it or do whatever. I'm going to... I'm going to just randomly trim this. to be crazy. So this is what not to do, but I'm just fixing my mistake of stamping on the wrong side, getting glue on there. I don't feel like recutting it. So that's what I will do there. Hmm. I'm not really loving it, but worst things have happened probably. I'll probably take my white gel pen maybe and do some, like draw a line or something, I don't know. But your, yours will be filling up that area, unlike mine. So we can take a look at the, again, at this to see exactly what's going on here on the inside of the back. Number three, number two, one, and the front. So I will be looking at that. It doesn't have to be identical. It's a personal preference if you want it to be the same or change it up. Do whatever you want. These, I'm just kind of kind of make it messy here and there. Because again, it's a Halloween project. It's spooky looking. So I don't think you can really go wrong with anything that you do. So I'm putting a large 3D foam square here. And a smaller one. So it looks even cooler when it's got lots of dimension and 
I'm just gonna make this messy, fold it forward. Just kind of curved like that. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you're making crafts right now? Nice. So next I will put a few dots of glue on this. Oh, thank you. So so helpful. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, you're stuck. Winnie, are you a paper crafter now? Oh my goodness. That's awesome. Um <laughs> That is so awesome. Yes. Man, you're such a nice girl. You're such a nice girl. So I'm putting these here. This little one goes in here. So I'm just going to put it together the way that it shows in the in the PDF and add some dimension here and there with some adhesive foam squares from scrapbook adhesives that I got on Amazon, like so. I'm gonna set this aside. So for these flowers, there are two of them, and I'm basically going to layer them up like this, like these two edges, these two edges line up. So I'm going to be layering one on top of the other, just like this. So these are layered up like so, and this goes like this. So that's how we're going to layer that. If you want to add some ink. To define those edges, you can. I'm just gonna do it real quick like that. And then you basically want this circle, this circle up here to be showing through like that, basically. So however you want to accomplish that is cool. We could Let's glue these three layers together first. You could do the dimension thing probably if you want. Oops. I am gonna kind of fold these out so that It's just a little more interesting like that. And then I want that, I want it to be like that, so I will put some glue in there, glue that down, and then this the leaf could go behind it or in front of it. If I do put it behind it, I can use it to stabilize it a little bit, which I will do. And then I think I will use a dimensional square to add dimension Gotta love dimension. 
And then if you want to pinch some of these a little bit, you can. Like so. So again, however you want to put it together, make it face however you want, it's your call. Whatever you think looks cool. I'm not going to think about it too much, I'm just throwing it down. Winnie, you're going to need to place an order for more foam squares, please. Thank you. Amazon. Inventory specialist. So this you could, I kind of have it like this in my original card. You can really put it wherever you want. I'm kind of stuck now because I put this on there. So I'll just do that. Oops. Okay, so we've got our three inserts in the body of our card. So next I'm going to take insert number three here and put some glue on both of its tabs and then carefully put that inside with the back of the tabs flush with the back of the box. On both sides. Oops, sorry Winnie. You might you might be a little bit in the way, but I love you. I'm oh, sorry. I know I didn't mean to whack your face. So before it's completely dry, you can fold it both ways to make sure it'll fold flat. And then I'll do the same thing with it. Insert number two. So I'm just carefully feeding that inside, making the, the back of the tab flush with what's behind it. Nice and parallel. And do a flatness check carefully. And same for number one. So our card's taking shape, it looks really nice. As far as, you know, spooky floral arrangements go. <clears throat> I 
Now all that's left to do is make this flower the same exact way we made the other one that's back here with this part showing through the way that that part showed through. And then you can affix it onto the front of your card like this. Just like this. So I really just glued it onto the flap and I left this part loose, which you could do or you could affix that too. It's up to you. But I think you get the idea. That one had a lot more pieces, so that took a little longer. Then we've also got the envelope. So here is the top, the bottom, and the two sides of our envelope. And so this is the top curve. So we're going to glue this onto here like this, and this onto here, and this onto the bottom and then this onto the top. So I made the this design like that so that when you open it up and you're looking at the tab, it's like a decorative tab. Just trying to uh, make it super cute on the inside. So if you wanted to, you could emboss these flaps. That would be cool. I embossed some envelope flaps with a wood grain embossing folder and I gave it a pretty cool look. I should have done that with these. Here's the one that I did. I embossed these first and I even embossed this with a, a spider and I rubbed some light brown ink and some dark brown ink on it. So I just felt like taking it to the next level, so I did, because I'm unstoppable with my craft supplies. I'm sure you are too. If you're if you're watching this, you're probably a craft crazy as well. So there's our side flaps. This card is just so large that I was not able to get an entire envelope on one sheet of 12 by 12 paper that would fit the card since it's so big. But that's okay because it's fun to uh, cut some of the parts out of different colors. Kind of spice things up a little bit. Now I can glue the top on. So there we go, super cute envelope. Now we can close it up with some glue on the bottom of the side flaps there. Fold up the bottom and then carefully fold your card flat to put it inside. So that's it for all the cards. I hope you have an awesome time making them. And again, if you do, I would love to see a picture on the internet, on Facebook, your blog, Pinterest, Instagram, whatever is easiest and best for you to share works for me. And I always love to see. So thanks for sharing. Can't wait to see. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting. Who's my scooper do? Who's my scooper to floppy 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 dog? Oh. oh, oh, it is you. Oh, it is you. Oh. Well, take it easy. Take it easy. Silly. You silly girl. You silly girl.
who's the most helpful crafty cat in the whole world of crafty cats? Well, at least in this craft room. I'm sure there's lots of other crafty, helpful cats out there too. I've seen pictures. You don't even know. You don't even know. Yeah. Aww. That's so nice. I love you too. You little cutie pie. Who's my favorite, favorite little friend? Favorite friend. Who's my favorite friend? <laughs>